And now it's time for part four of the storyline. If you remember, the stranger appeared in the end of the last issue. So now we get to Avengers 317. Let's give it a read. Avengers 317, 1990. Guest starring The Amazing Spider-Man. Yet again. Jarvis has lost communications with the Avengers that went out went to assist Iron Man and Vision. He finally is able to get a satellite to tune into the gigantic spaceship. He finally sees the gigantic spaceship that Nebula commands and even the hole that is tore into the side by the giant stranger is even small to the comparison of the entire ship. And now we see the stranger bursting into the ship asking, where is Nebula? And then we're introduced to the entire cast that is here. Circes, the eternal mistress of molecules, the thunder god Thor, the super soldier Captain America, the armored Avenger Iron Man, the synthoid Vision, the... Terrest the extraterrestrial from Titan, Star Fox, and the web-slinging Spider-Man who's feeling a little over his head, and Nebula, Gunther, and two of her cohorts tap wrapped up in unbreakable tethers. The Stranger pushes past the Avengers as he has no quarrel with them and snaps what's supposed to be unbreakable tethers tying all four of them together. He picks up Nebula and he is most angry with her, telling her that he had violated this that she had violated the sanctity of his pri privacy. And she, still under one of Star Fox's love taps, seems to be enjoying the entire confrontation. Spider-Man tries to get the the stranger's attention, seeing if he can dissuade him from the rage that he currently finds himself in. As he goes up to him, he says, Do you remember how we went a couple of rounds on the moon? And if you all remember, I actually covered this Marvel team-up. It was Marvel team-up number 55. The stranger says he does remember Spider-Man, but he will have words with Nebula, and he says we will consider this conversation... We will continue this conversation elsewhere, and he leaves from the very same hole that he created. The Avengers seem slightly annoyed how the Stranger was able to push back, them, push past them like they weren't even there. Iron Man ties up the cohorts again after they have been untied, and Captain America asks Cersei if she can scan the Stranger. She said, you see what happened when I was able to scan Nebula. Do you really want me scanning the Stranger? He says that's a good point. As they go to the edge of the hole, they all stand in awe as they see the Stranger spaceship, which is twice as big as Nebula's, and hers was already massive as it is. So you can only imagine how big the Stranger spaceship is. Spider-Man studies the ship and says that it is roughly the size of the country of Argentina and asks Captain America if we're really going to go do this. Captain America says, of course, it's all a day's work. And as they prepare to embark to the stranger spaceship, a ray comes out and just miss blasting Spider-Man and Thor. A robot enters in through the giant hole, blasts in a couple more beams, flies around, and lands in front of them and says, You are interfering with matters that not concern you. None of you may get aboard the stranger's ship. The stranger then head then appears and says that he is talking through them through an astral projection, and they need to listen to the robot. And Captain America says, We're not going to stop until we find out what your intentions with Nebula is. The stranger tells Captain America that if it will stop him from trying to enter the ship, he will tell him what Nebula did. He said that Nebula had found a planet that he thought was knowable only to him, his planet. And somehow she was able to breach his defenses. Nebula and Gunther are talking about what is contained on this massive ship that she is in search of. They come up to the giant doorway that is locked, and Gunther is warning her about trying to grab the object, saying it is the most powerful object in the multiverse, which only makes Nebula want it more. 
they cannot breach the door, so Nebula starts to to get into the sides where the circuitry is. Gunther is standing, scanning and says, yes, this is exactly the way to breach the door a little more. And they do it. The door opens and they see a mysterious glowing device. The stranger exclaims that the room is so massive it takes them two Earth, the combination of two Earth hours to get to the device, and they realize it is the Infinity Union. The stranger tells them that the Infinity Union is a combination of three powerful devices that, when put together, allows them to control all ambient energy. Spider-Man making a couple of his quips, which is what he is known for, and Thor says that your jest is misplaced, that we now play a game of gods. We now play the game of gods, not mortals. Iron Man has interrogated the suspects, and they tell Iron Man that they are after the Infinity Union, and they have rigged a device that if anybody other than Nebula touches it, it will obliterate an entire sector of space. Iron Man says that he has to go warn the others so nobody else will touch it. The stranger is expressing annoyance that he cannot read the mind and read her mind because of a blockade that has been put onto it, which stops her mind from being read. He says that the recent spasms that were co that were caused by Nebula was done by the device, and he does not know Nebula's entire intention on using it. But the universe destroying ability has been absorbed by the Infinity Union. The Stranger is annoyed and worried. He says that if anybody were to get a hold of the, the device, they could accidentally unreach a massive amount of energy that could be devastating to the universe. His probes have, not, have been unsuccessful, so he increases his psychic probing of the ship, and it affects everyone over there, including Vision, because it just rips through all of their minds. Captain America says that they've had it. If something this powerful requires this level of searching, then neither Nebula or the Stranger need to have it in their possession. Iron Man catches up to Cap and the others. He said that he heard Cap's conversation and that he doesn't know the half of it. If any of them touch that device besides Nebula, it'll set this place off like Hiroshima. Cap says, we need to locate this device now. Fan out, look for it. If you find it, don't touch it. We see Spider-Man going through the ship looking for the device and starts to talk about how what the Avengers handle on a daily basis is a little out of his league. Then his spider sense starts to go off. He uses it as a homing device and finds the door. As he tries to open it through the handle, he finds out that he's locked. And he says, well, if the scientific method won't work, dot, dot, dot. He says he gets a thrill out of opening the door in a primal level as he rips it off of his hinges. He finds the device and says jackpot, but he realizes that he can't touch it yet. But he says he can't let it sit there for too long. His spider sense is going off like a four-alarm fire, and he needs to take care of it before the stranger or nebula catches up. So he decides to fire a web line to the device and says, What's the worst that can happen? And we all know how that always turns out. The device reaps out a large span of energy and Spider-Man cries out as it hits him. Quasar arrives and says that there's not as much cleanup done as he would have expected. As he starts to go through the compound, he says that he hasn't had much time for the Avengers with his other duties that he's had and that he's a part-time Avenger. He gets into the communication room and calls out for anybody, noticing that there's no one around. Quasar looks around and goes to the computers and finds that none of the Avengers are actually on the premises. He hears someone in the adjacent room. As he goes over to there, he sees Jarvis. Jarvis starts to explain what has happened with the Avengers in the space station. Quasar looks up with a startled look on his face and starts to say something. Just then, the computer screen explodes and both of them are thrust back. To be continued. Many questions answered. A few still remain. What is the power of the Infinity Union? What of Spider-Man after he webbed the device? What was the explosion that hit Jarvis and Quasar? Tune in next week for the fifth and final final installment of this storyline and see everything come to an end. Until then, see ya.